जी साहब एक दफा फिर से खुश आमद टोरंटो जिंदा दिलों का शहर कैनेडा ब्यूटिफुल कंट्री ब्यूटिफुल कंट्री माई कैनेडा एंड आई वॉन्ट एवरीबडी फ्रॉम पाकिस्तान अप्लाई फॉर योर इमिग्रेशन यू विल डेफिनेटली गेट अ चांस वी आर गोइंग टू हैव अ वंडरफुल इन्फॉर्मेशन विच वी आर गोइंग टू शेयर विद यू आई हैव माई ऑनरेबल मिनिस्टर ऑफ इमिग्रेशन जनाब अहमद साहब असल वालेकुम नाउ फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल एज वी आर बीन वॉच ऑल ओवर my question to you is what is bill 6 uh, c6 bill c6 is really important to us we want it to pass it is going through the senate now uh, it passed uh, the house of commons it went to the senate i appeared before the senate committee uh, answered questions and now we're waiting for the full senate to vote on it there have been some amendments introduced by some senators we have to look at those amendments respond accordingly but we are hopeful that C6 will pass very soon because i know a lot of people in the community are waiting for it it's the right bill it makes some really important changes and removes the obstacles to citizenship that were put there by the previous government we want more permanent residents in fact i want all permanent residents if it was possible to become canadian citizens so some of the highlights are that uh, it will not be 65 the age will be yeah so i'll tell you the highlights number 1 it allows for time spent in canada before somebody becomes a permanent resident to be counted towards citizenship right now if you are in canada for 5 years and then you get your pr you start from scratch and you count 3 years actually c24 it says 4 years out of 6 and then you become a canadian c6 says it brings it back to 3 years out of 5 and if you spend time in canada prior to becoming a permanent resident you get to uh, you get you get credit for up to 1 year of that time so if let's say you were an international student you spent 3 years here then you got your pr you will only need to spend another 2 years to become a citizen the other thing that it does is it eliminates two tier citizenship it eliminates second class citizenship a canadian is a canadian is a canadian if you are convicted of a crime in canada that uh, is a serious crime and you are you were born in canada and i was not born in canada but we are both canadian we should be punished equally i shouldn't have to lose my my citizenship and you get to keep it even though we committed the same crime we should deal with criminals in canada criminals belong in jail we don't need to export our problems to other other countries and the other thing that c6 does really importantly is it uh, reduces uh, the it brings back the age um, variation for for language from uh, the the previous government made it difficult it it lowered it to 14 years of age up to 64 we're bringing it back to between 18 and 55 54 yeah. now uh, my honorable immigration minister is here this is for it's a it's a very good change now yeah. what are the foreign credentials foreign credentials as you know provincial bodies are main mainly are run by provincial bodies which are managed by uh, or have juris- the provinces have jurisdiction over them but we in the federal government are doing everything that we can to deal with this issue because we want highly skilled newcomers to uh, earn their full potential and practice in their field we want engineers to practice engineering we don't want them to drive a cab so in that sense budget 2017 this year that was uh, but the budget that we introduced 2 weeks ago 3 weeks ago uh, has 27.5 million dollars and then 5.5 million after that for each year in a targeted employment strategy for newcomers this strategy has three phase uh, three parts the first part is more pre expanded pre arrival services so that skilled immigrants can start the credential recognition and licensing process before they even get to canada okay so that they can hit the ground running and get into the economy second we're giving them loans a lot of uh, skilled immigrants they come to canada they're engineers doctors even electricians uh, lo- lawyers everything they come but because of the application fees and the exams and the travel and the books it's very expensive so they say you know what i can't afford to do this because i have to support my family and they end up getting another job they lose because they don't practice in their field they don't earn their full potential but we also lose because we lose from their skills we need those skills in our economy so what we're doing under 
budget 2017, under this targeted employment strategy, we're giving them loans so that they can pay for the exams, they can pay for the application fees, they can pay for the books and the travel to the, to the exam center so that they can become engineers, electricians, doctors. I met a dentist in Vancouver who's now practicing in Canada who got loans from uh, this employment strategy. I met an electrician who, in Toronto who's practicing. I met a nurse in Vancouver. So we are bringing real help. The third part is equally important. We're introducing paid internships to allow skilled immigrants to get the valued Canadian work experience. We're doing mentorship. We're doing job matching. And we're, we're putting together other innovative pilot programs to, to enable uh, highly skilled immigrants to access the job market. And we're convincing some employers, some employers, to give these people a chance. So we're doing a lot. And we're encouraging the provinces and the regulatory bodies to do more. Part of the money will also go to the regulatory bodies to do more outreach to these people. Now my last question, because yep. I know I represent my South Asians, India people from India and especially from Pakistan. Okay. I am told and sometimes people have you know, a feeling that yep. uh, there is a more waiting time towards people from the Pakistan. What would you say about that? Absolutely correct. Uh, we had a problem. The previous minister uh, was aware of uh, issues regarding temporary resident visas from the Chandigarh office and from Islamabad. Those two visa uh, offices, uh, there was a lot of feedback to the previous Minister of Immigration that those needed to be dealt with. The minister worked hard, he went to Chandigarh and now the Chandigarh office has, uh, the approval rate has gone from 43%, which was very low, to 60%. Is that progress? Absolutely. That's a 17% improvement. Can we do more? Absolutely. It has also been brought to my attention from uh, members of the community and, and members of the caucus that Islamabad is also uh, has some issues with respect to processing and wait times. I will do what I can as a minister. I can guarantee you that I will put my best efforts to deal with processing times in all visa offices, including Islamabad. I want to I want to assure you and your viewers Thank you. that we, we are very serious. My mandate letter includes an item called client service. We want to make sure that all clients who interact with the immigration system, whether they're Canadians, permanent residents, or foreign nationals from everywhere, including Pakistan, are treated fairly, are treated quickly, they get the right response, they, get the, they know where their case is. A lot of times people are not angry if they get a no or a yes. It's the wait times that are bothersome. So we need to do better, and we can do better, and we will do better. So there is a promise that this waiting time will be less and Canadian government will directly deal with Pakistan so they don't have to involve no, any I, third party. No, no, I will deal with the... We, our, I'm, I am responsible for the immigration portion of our Islamabad mission. So if there's ways to improve that processing, whether it's the processing that's happening in Islamabad or the shared work between Islamabad and Abu Dhabi or Islamabad and London, I don't know if you know, London processes the cases from Pakistan. It's, uh, Abu Dhabi processes the cases from Pakistan. Those are, I've already visited London, our London visa office. I went there to specifically talk about London processing times, but also Islamabad. So I'm already on the, on the job, but I will also uh, deal with, uh, uh, dealing with Islamabad uh, in, when, from the perspective of Abu Dhabi and also Islamabad itself. So we're doing, I am very, very concerned and my main priority is client service across the board, not just for visas, for temporary resident visas, for permanent resident applications, which we've really reduced processing times. It used to be eight to 10 months, it now takes 50 days, and we're going down to 14 days. So there's some good news. Spousal went from three years to less than 12 months. Thank you. you know, Thank so. you, Minister. And I'm a proud Canadian, and I want everybody, get yourself well-educated, and apply for Canada. And I'm very proud of you, Minister, my Thank Honorable you. Minister, that he started where he started in Canada and where I can see him now. That is beauty of Canada. Thank I you. thank you very much for your time. Thank you, and before I leave you, I, I don't want to forget one last point. We are targeting international students. 
So if there are international students in Pakistan who want to study in Canada, we welcome them and we will work very hard to process their permits, student permits and visas fast. Okay? See, Minister is here with me. If you are a student we and a good student, come. our government and our minister, yeah. they want to want you to come here yes. in Canada. Absolutely. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Thank you.